what Judge Lopez said, it has uh, uh, look, it has caused an upset to the DA. The DA is literally upset to or, or over what this man said. They are literally upset. They don't like everything and anything that Judge Lopez said because of uh, look, uh, look because of an obvious reasons, right? If DA had power right now, if they were to get all the powers that they want right now, if they were to get access to the things that they want now, I can guarantee you DA will do whatever it takes to either one, protect even further uh, the, look of the, the, the asset of the white monopoly capital, or make sure that they, 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 they get things to or move things to the position that is favorable to them. Remember, I had somebody that uh, was saying to me, Urop Hesov says they only need five years from now. So they've already strategized that they will do whatever it takes to protect them. It will not, do not be shocked if they start passing laws that are uh, uh, like that you don't even understand how this laws has came into fruition. That is the mission of ETA right now. So Church Lopez speaks um, a language that they don't want to hear. They really don't want to hear the language that Church Lopez is saying when he says that, no, there must be a change in this constitution. This constitution must speak to the people of this country. It must speak to black people. A language that we heard from Jacob Zuma when Jacob Zuma said that no, we can't have we can't be Africa Africans living in Africa but have a constitution that is favorable to people who are not in Africa. No, this paper, this document must be changed. You could even see it. You could even hear the the journalist. Uh, they were very not comfortable, right? Uh, listening to they were they were not comfortable listening to Judge Lope explaining that because it, it, it is something that the DA wants to cover. They want to cover those grounds to the best of their ability, right? So I'm going to prove to you there was a journalist, and you can tell you can tell that that's a white journalist that was asking that question, right? To say, what are we going to do with the constitution? They are very worried about any changes that will be, will be made in the constitution because. That is exactly how it is going to. That is exactly of how uh, the look at the look at the, the changes. That is where the changes has to be made because if the changes is made in the constitution, then any everything and every anything else is a thing of a past. If you want the land, you will easily get it because the constitution will now be in favor of you, right? So that is how actually in the beginning that's where they manipulated everything. When they gave the political power, they took the constitution, they changed the constitution, and made sure that the constitution favors them. Now, EFF and MK party rise, right? At first, it was EFF who advocated for a change in the constitution. That's why EFF was the enemy number one until the introduction of MK party. Then when MK party was introduced, MK party started to, be, to speak about it very aggressively. And MK party changed and became the enemy number one. In this YouTube channel, I know for a fact that you and I were not enemy number one. Why do I know this? It is because you are going to do this. If you are not yet subscribed, what are you waiting for? Come on, good people, because to subscribe it is free, to like the video it is free, to comment in the comment section below it is free of charge, to click the notification bell it is free of charge, to share this video it is free of charge, to watch this video until the end it is free of charge. Also, good people, I mean come on, to watch the ads it's free of charge, and that's how you financially contribute to this YouTube channel. Speaking about financial contribution to the channel, you can join, become a member of this YouTube channel from as little as 20 rand a month. You can also uh, use the Super Thanks Party. In case you don't want to do that, guys, there is a way where you can use my media company banking details to donate to the channel. And you know what I'm saying? will bring you more and also guys want to buy more equipment so the power is in your hands please do the honorable thing as we proceed now there are three videos from Ucha Chlope that I want to I want to show you in this YouTube channel in this particular in this specific video uh first of all remember I said to you Ucha Chlope was speaking to uh, that Judge Chlope speaks about the fact that uh they are going to make the changes right. Journalists ask Uchach Lope about that. 
uh, you will notice that these people, their main concern is that if these black people were to get into power and change the constitution, the uh, the only thing that makes us remain relevant and bosses is that we have more money than them. So if they change the constitution, they will have the money. Take a look at what a journalist uh, in look uh, you ask Ucha Shlope here. Um, so by virtue of that, that creates a vacancy that allows us to fulfill those roles, and that's exactly what has happened. Um, nothing more, nothing less. Besides that. One last question from me, Aisha Ismail from ENCA. Um, just a few minutes ago, you took an oath to be loyal to the Constitution of the Republic yes. of South Africa. Are you still intending to amend the Constitution or to change the Constitution? Well, let's deal with that. It's easy. A Constitution is there. It is binding upon all of us. It is the supreme law of the land. Indeed, laws or conduct inconsistent with the Constitution cannot withstand constitutional scrutiny. We intend acting within the law, and in the National Assembly we will act within the rules and practices here in the National Assembly, right? We are not hooligans who are going to act within the law and fight for our cause within the law, right? It, when you say you want Clause 25 of the Constitution to be changed, which makes provision which, so that it can make provision for expropriation of land without compensation. It doesn't mean you're going to start looting, but that's what we'll be canvassing for. We'll be canvassing in a civilized manner within the law to have the law changed. What is wrong with that? What is wrong with acting within the law to have the law which is unjust, which does not benefit the majority of the people of this country. What is wrong in acting within the law to change the law which does not benefit poor people? And I'm talking with specific reference to land. And if you remember historically, even today, 80% of the land is still in the hands of white people. And that's not tenable. They know it too. It's not tenable. And who are left outside queuing like fools. It's not tenable. They know it too. So we will fight within the law to have the Constitution amended. Thank you. Thank you. I think you've got to your. Okay. Moving right, law, right along, Josh Sloper again spoke about something, right? And we'll come back to another video of Josh Sloper when he speaks, this explicitly said, listen, we. We cannot be living in South Africa, but I have laws that does not speak to South Africans. And speaking about the laws that does not speak to this country, we'll come back to this one. Uh, the issue of who's the leader of EMK party has been also clarified. Who is the leader of EMK party? Well, uh, Judge Lope voluntarily explained the situation and said, listen, I am a leader here. I'm a chef whip here. But listen, don't confuse that. Do not think that I am now the leader of EMK Party. No, I'm not the leader of EMK Party. President Jacob Zuma remains the leader of EMK Party, right? Uh, it, was, it was very important to explain that because we know that uh, Uchablani Kumalo went and said, no, hey, there, was a there, was a, there were letters that were faked, blah, 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 blah. So because of the letters that, letters that were faked, uh, I mean, uh, I was unlawfully removed and blah, 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 blah. And also just to make sure that uh, people understand the direction that the reason Jacob Zuma is not here, it's not because um, it is uh, of his doing. No, he would have loved to be here. But the constitution does not allow him, as we all know. Take a look at what Uja Chlope said about that here. I am the leader of the MK party in parliament. The president is still President Zuma, who is unfortunately not able to be here today. First and foremost, I'm grateful on behalf of the entire leadership of the MK party. I am grateful to President Zuma, whose idea it was that the MK party must be started in the first place. The MK party was founded because uh, the ANC, in our shared view, is a collective view which we share as the MK party, has completely gone astray. This is not the ANC that we used to know. 
particularly over the past five years under the leadership of Cyril Ramaphosa. This is no longer the ANC which fights for poor people, which fights for landless people. It is a different ANC altogether. And I'm grateful to the leadership of the uh, MK for showing confidence in me, for getting me to lead the party. Of course, I'm new here. There are colleagues within the party who were ministers before. Some of them have been around for a while. It is my hope that they will continue to be a source of inspiration to me. Now, I said to you I was going to come back to the issue of EDA, uh, sorry, e -E look, yes, EDA being upset. Now, let's speak about this. If you go to a country called Nigeria, for instance, in Nigeria, uh, there are laws, there are constitutions, I wouldn't say entirely, but Nigerians will tell you that in Nigeria, you can't say this. And people hear you saying that, and you think you're going to get away with it. You can't say in Nigeria, I'm going to bewitch you. Yeah, me, I'll deal with you, me. They will punish you. Thing, laws like that, it accommodate the African diaspora. But if you look at the constitution, for instance, uh, as it stands, uh, it was not, not long ago, right? Though, though he was very hypocritical, who judge Ratamo Hwatling in the Senzo Mewa case, there was a state, he allowed the state to lead a, a, a traditional doctor or whatever. Uh, uh, look, he allowed them to lead that evidence. Just when they were done leading that evidence, um, okay, okay, continues. It doesn't question that, but the defense wants to introduce that evidence. It's that telling them that how unconstitutional that evidence is, and it's not gonna look or do anything about that evidence. And you like, but you allow the state to, to do the same thing. Why wouldn't you afford them the same opportunity? You should have afforded them the same opportunity. In other words, you allow the state to sell the narrative. Now that we are bringing in evidence that will counter uh, counter that narrative, now suddenly we become the wrong people. So he, he mentioned something that is important, but it's just that the application of that from his side, it was hypocritical that he allows the state to do it. But when the defense wants to do it, suddenly now he remembers the constitution. In that, he said that you can't bring this, this does not have effect, that I cannot make a decision over that. Even though the very same judge, he said that during the times of apartheid, he saw people turning and becoming animal as an evidence that he saw it with his own eyes. But the constitution does not speak to that. We know, for instance, in South Africa, the, 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 look, in, in South Africa, for instance, there's been many a times where it was proven that this is a matter of witchcraft. But the constitution cannot uh, speak anything to that. So that is now leading to this perspective to say that the constitution must be changed and that the constitution must speak to the, look, the South African diaspora. It must speak to the South African culture. For instance, you will notice that how long it took for the constitution to speak to polygamy. But polygamy is a practice in South Africa. It's a non-practice. It's a cultural thing. But the constitution did not allow that, right? Uh, there are many things. They are, I'll tell you about some of them. But uh, I, I firstly interested to uh, like I, I'm interested that you must listen to Ucha Chlope here. I have in mind the EFF. I have in mind the ATM and other progressive parties. <laughs> uh, we stand for the issue of land in this country and we're not apologetic about it. We want each and every South African, black or white, to have access to land. Land in this country, we all know the history of land. We know how it was acquired. There is a historical context to it. We are not apologetic. We are also not apologetic in our call for the law to be Africanized. By that we mean we bring back the laws that used to govern the African people. And one of those laws is this. The land in Africa can never be the subject of private ownership. The land belongs to the nation. It belongs to the nation. It doesn't form part of private ownership. The other thing, we have come here 
to come and work who have been elected, we will do our best to stay above petty politics. We are not here to be petty, we are here to work because we have been elected by the people of this country. We consider that to be our role and we are going to engage in a very robust debate but in a respectful manner. Right. But please make no mistake, we are not going to allow ourselves to be bullied by anyone. We know our rights, we are adults, we know why we are here. But we are going to be polite and courteous to colleagues, but firm on the issues that we stand for. Right. I think I've covered everything that I wanted to cover. Right. We will take one or two questions. Don't ask me what did I have for breakfast in the morning. <laughs> Um, sure. Good day, Aisha Ismail from ENCA. I'd like to know whether you are still going to pursue the... Okay, now, um, speaking about uh, things that are not, uh, things that are uh, very much, uh, they, they don't, like uh, speaking about the constitution that does not speak to uh, the African culture. Let's take, uh, there are many examples that we can take. Uh, we saw. Uh, let, give, let me give an example about it. When 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 football is about to play, the the cost, look look you will see played local teams doing things. The worst part of it, we have seen a team a, a local lighting fire in the midst of the stadium, uh, local doing whatever things that they were doing. That's part of African thing, right? Um, and the, the other team, the South African team, was offended about that. But the constitution does speaks of that. No. So that is why you say that if the constitution was designed to speak to the African people, it will be much better, right? Not that it will be perfect, but it will be much better. Speaking about better. So, <laughs> what how best can we describe the situation? Let's describe it this way. How many of things that are cultural that will will not make sense to the constitution, right? For instance, when a hitman is about to do his work, he goes to the a traditional person to do his work. But will you say the traditional person has violated the constitution? No. Why? Because the constitution doesn't speak to the African culture. You can only charge that person. Um, look, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not a lawyer, but if I, know, from what I know, you can only charge that person under this thing. It's called uh, an accomplice. That, look, look, for instance, you knew about this crime, but you did not report this crime. But if you look at it from a deeper perspective, this person actually protected this person. But because the constitution does not speak to that, you can't do anything to that person. And then, uh, in fact, the, that can be counteracted by saying, I was practicing my African gift. Does my African gift prohibit such practice? No. A hitman is complete, has completed his job. He comes back. He goes to the same person for cleansing, right? Um, you know, to get a point, we moved from the issue of the land, which is a very, very, very big thing, which is going to enrich black people, to the issue of Things that affect everybody again, such as the traditional matters, it affects everyone and anyone is affected by that. And we cannot deny, we cannot deny that, right? It affects everybody and anybody in this country. So why do we have a borrowed constitution then, right? Why don't we have a constitution? Oh, yes, I remembered. I wanted to mention this point as well. The point that I wanted to mention is the following one. Now, you will remember that in South Africa, specifically in KZN, there's this culture of checking whether the girl is still a virgin or not. Here's an example. That culture has been working perfectly well. People were tested, proven to look, but because this, like, it's not scientifically proven, 
Okay, let me say, let's, let me not say because, let me start this by saying, there was a time where you will remember, oh, this woman, this old lady who's advocating for the, the, this practice, right, uh, under the, the cultural thing, right? You will remember she argued this following point when the United King, the United Nation, what, 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 argued that this culture that is being practiced in South Africa is unconstitutional. That's what they said. And they said, firstly, this thing is not scientifically proven. To them, everything has to be scientifically proven. Even if that thing is not, like, even if that thing is working 110% correct. But because according to them, it's not scientifically proven. It's not approved research. Look, it's not approved constitutional. Do you understand what I'm, where I'm going with this? Here's another example. This one, is it, it, it upsets me big time. It upsets me because the, look, old people back in the days, um, old people back in the days, uh, I'm not sure if we had uh, inserted the video, uh, Judge Schlob, eh? did we do that? The other one, uh, the third one, because he's got three videos. Okay. Um, our parents, let's say there's a person who's pregnant and this person has got some complications let me say so the pet the, look let's say the child is facing downward our parents knew herbs this is not a matter of consulting sangomas i'm just talking about natural herbs such as if you've got headache an elderly person will say take this and this and this put drink that thing i'm talking about herbs like that not the the, the herbs that we take to we take we, we will take to a traditional or a sangoma or, no, no no i'm just talking about something simple practice you have um, uh, Inyongo, they tell you, take this and this. Our parents knew how to use things like that to, to twist the baby and like, and they knew. They could tell you that the baby is facing downward. Let's change. They had ways, traditional ways of doing that. Two, our, do you know that people in the days will never, will never, will never give birth using scissors? Our parents knew what to do. In order for, your, for, 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 for this woman to give birth naturally, yet softer. Um, a lot of things like that happened, right? I am a product of that. I mean, I was never, uh, look, my, my, my parents never gave birth in a hospital. They gave birth the traditional way at home. That's how I came to, uh, that's why I came, that's how I came to earth. I was never born at a hospital. They used traditional ways, traditional ways of doing things. But that traditional ways, because it's not recognized by the constitution, becomes a violation of the constitution. The question is, if you look at the older ways of doing things versus the, 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 the new generation, mind you, I'm a Christian, but I'm saying, in the because remember, you must distinguish between being Sangoma, practicing Sangoma, using the same hair, but under Isangoma or Inyanga or practicing that thing. You can practice these things without being Isangoma. Like uh, me, I I believe in natural herbs because I can't be buying the medication at the at the pharmacy, which comes with a lot of side effects. When there is a traditional thing that I can do freely, I don't have to pay anybody, and also it has got less effects on my body. Why am I running for drugs when there's this one? But my ways becomes unconstitutional. And mind you, I'm not advocating for people who are speaking about spiritualizing things. Those things were never spiritualized. It was just a common practice. I grew up in an environment where no matter what, what no matter the problem you have, I'm telling you, I grew up in such an environment, no matter the problem you have, the, look, you will just be told, okay, you've got this problem. Go and get this happened, this happened, this happened. Mix it this way and drink it. Uh, no, not this thing of going into Indumba, Papa, Ta, uh, 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 Nah. There were, look, these things were never spiritualized because now we are spiritualizing everything, even things that are not even supposed to be spiritualized. We're making it African spirituality. Hey, certain things, guys, I've got nothing. Uh, uh, I'll show you things that are unconstitutional according to them. Uh, my brother, my, one of my brother from another mother, from my, my, my mother, uh, look, same um, family of my mother, but the elders, elderly sister, right? 
he is a Rastafarian. He, the other time he took me into a mountain and he showed me traditional things that he will use to, wa to wash his teeth and they will be white. This man, how he will, for instance, when he's mixing his, um, when he's mixing, something like umdo, right? But he's not going to use sugar and everything, but ew, his food is always, oh, he knows how to mix this herbs and the, the the orange because what people also don't understand is that even onion is a herb by the way just simple thing like an onion but yeah we are not that that's not where we are i'm saying my brother he knows how to mix all these things together to create uh to create uh, or to make this thing sound taste nice without using he will use these natural things, the same natural things that the constitution is discouraging because it doesn't speak to, uh, 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 yeah, man, because the aim is to discourage people from from getting health or getting, here's an, God, have mercy, have mercy. Uh, King Charles in England was sick not long ago. Um, I'm not sure whether he's a spokesperson of what, or that person is very close to the king in England. Guess what, what they said? They said that man is not going to be treated using the, 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 the Western way of doing things, of medicine. They are going to use the, 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 the herbs, right? Why is King Charles not interested in hospitals, but that man can afford everything and anything that the world can afford, I mean, can offer? But he chose herbs over that thing. It shows herbs have got less complications and less problems than this. In Africa, they wouldn't cut your body to, 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 solve, to, to solve your problem. No, even if you've got a, a, a cancer, for instance, they wouldn't cut and to put you into chemotherapy. They knew what herbs to use to clean the inside. And once that is cleaned, then the person is healed. Right now, there's something that they don't want to recognize. Do you remember? I'm just showing you how African ways that, that are good is uh, discouraged. Now, let me show you this. Um, there was, during the times of COVID-19, do you remember that uh, people got sick, right? People were recommended that that thing which was never passed it. Today, people are dying. You know, I'm, I know a person who took that vaccine thing. Do you know that the, the private part of that guy is no longer working because of that thing? I know people who died out of heart attack because of that thing. But if you remember vividly, African, the African approach was discouraged. It was said, that's not scientifically proven, right? Do you remember that? They are doing anything and everything to discourage that. So if you change the constitution and you make it uh, look a, a thing, nobody's going to force you to take a, a, a thing that tomorrow is going to kill you, yet they will not account to that. You will just be allowed to go and look and find anything that, that that your fathers and your forefathers have taught you to use and you are healed and then you are go. And then also, you know what it does? Uh, it just just to, to prove this point, I can expand and expand. At work, for instance, you can't come to work and say, I was sick, but I use traditional ways of doing things, so I don't have a, a letter for that. You can't. But if you constitutionalize that and then... Uh, you can get sick and go to a traditional doctor or healer. They will give you a letter and say, listen, use this letter. And then it will be recognized as a proper letter as well. They can take traditional healers will diagnose you and the, the, your employee will pay for that. But the constitution currently doesn't speak to that. You have to, you have to go past the, 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 the normal way, the hospitals, the scientifically proven one, then uh, go get their letters and the medication, drop them and then go to you. I'm not saying people should be doing that. I'm just so showing you how this thing doesn't speak to people who are living in Africa. Yet people who are living in Africa are practicing that. 